Okay, YouTube, what is the goddamn deal? It is, of course, your boy Volandis, and today we are going to be talking about scanning and um, editing your film photos at home and what I do for the best results. To start off, first of all, I scan on a Epson V550, a very cheap, very affordable flatbed scanner. Hopefully the things that I show you today and how I scan my film photos uh, lead you to that point of, you know, some good image quality, some good crisp colors, and just some, some good overall images. I don't wanna talk too much for this video. I kinda just wanna get straight into it and show you guys how I go about about scanning and editing my film photos at home and hopefully you guys can do it too after this okay so the very first thing that I like to do when I start scanning my photos before I scan my photos is I like to take one of these cloths clean the glass off with this microfiber cloth second thing I like to do is take one of these little rocket blowers and then I like to rocket blow the next thing that I like to do is take this anti-Newton glass. Um, it just some glass that you can use to um, not get the little Newton rings on your film photos from the glass and the scanner. So, what, but the thing is, I do not use this. The only thing I use this for is to line up the film. Um, I don't put this on top of my film. I know a lot of people like put it on their film so their film can be um, as flat as possible, like um, on the glass. But what I like to do is just like put it right here because since I don't use the little film holders, I need um, a way to line up the film so that it's straight and that it, you know what I'm saying, doesn't move and stuff like that. I do scan the film uh, directly onto the glass because I want some of the times the film border to be in the picture and um, you can't do that with the film holder that comes with the Epson scanner. So um, that's how you bypass all of that. The next thing that I like to do is clearly grab some film and I like to give this a little rocket blow so as much dust as off of it as possible. But the thing is with this is I kind of like the dust particles being on my film. Um, clearly not too much because it kind of looks crazy but I don't mind a few dust particles a lot of people are always telling me to like dust <laughs> like rocket blow my film because there's too much dust particles on it but for them that's their liking for me I kind of like it with the dust because you know this is film and I don't want it to be particularly perfect or you know what I'm saying too clean I want to make sure we put that in there the right way um, and then make sure it's straight then close this and we're ready to scan. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is open up Epson Scan 2 and uh, you know what I'm saying? Wait for it to connect to the scanner. This stuff takes quite a bit of time and that's what I'm saying when I say there's a drawback to using this scanner. The next thing you wanna do is make sure it's on transparency unit and then we're gonna scan this as color positive film. And uh, 48 bit colors fine, 3200. DPI and then scanning quality is clearly high. Um, we want to scan it as a TIFF. Um, this doesn't really matter if you want to have, you know what I'm saying, name it something better than you can. I'm gonna name this V and then yeah. So it'll be V88.TIFF. Then the folder you want to scan it to, I'm gonna scan it to the folder that I've been scanning my, um, you know, work too. So then you click preview. You hear that? This is doing its magic. What I like to do is I like to scan more than just the photo, like a little bit of the white part, just to, you know what I'm saying? Make sure I got everything because sometimes you don't get all of this in the scan and then, you know, click scan and then you, you wait for like maybe three minutes, three to five minutes for this to scan. And then, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You can sit back, have you a little drink of water while you wait for this, go on your phone, see what they talking about on Instagram. Okay, so now we got all of our photos in Lightroom and um, what we are now going to do is convert them so now they can be actual, you know, photographs and not, you know, 
negatives anymore. So what you want to do to do that, first of all, you're going to need a application called Negative Lab Pro. If you are a film photographer, even if you're not a film photographer, you have probably heard of Negative Lab Pro. I know there's other things out there to, you know, convert your photos with, and you can even convert your photos within Epson scan if you so please. For me, Negative Lab Pro is what works. So first thing you need to do is you need to grab your eyedropper tool. You need to pick a target that is neutral, which is the film border. And then what you want to do is crop in to um, your photo so you don't, you know what I'm saying, convert with the film border. So what I like to do is just probably right there. Then you press Control N to bring up Negative Lab Pro. I use a tip scan, color model is Frontier, pre-saturation is uh, 3, which is default, and then border buffer is 5%. I have never changed anything on this, on this screen ever since I started using it over a year ago. It has been these settings ever since. Never changed anything. Unless I do black and white, then I put it as black and white. But this is clearly not black and white, so we're going to... No, go back to Frontier. So anyway, so then once you're done with that, you wanna hit convert negatives. Photogra like scanning your photos by yourself takes a little bit of time. So it is converted and look at that, just like magic, I like to call it. We have a film photo with your borders and everything. Now over here, you can like adjust brightness and um, contrast, uh, just anything you need to adjust. I like to adjust a few things in here first like the brightness on this, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. The contrast, I kinda, I turn my contrast down in my photos because I bring it back in other places. So I turn the contrast down. Um, let me turn these lights up, turn these darks down, and then that's how we're getting some of that contrast back in there. I like the feel of this photo, like the blacks being really black and then the lights being really light. Um, I like to add a little bit of yellow into literally every single film photo that I can literally every single photo that I scan I add a little bit of yellow to it I don't know why I think it looks good I, it just adds to the look that I like so add a little bit more yellow if this came out like a little bit more red like if it was red I would clearly add a little bit more blue but then that makes it green so you need to like you know what I'm saying play around with colors you need to know what colors make a certain color so just have keep that in mind when you're adding yellow if you're gonna add some uh some blue to it you might get a little bit green but yeah anyway um i don't do too much of that within here i really just add yellow to the mids and that's about it and then you want to come down here clearly make it straight crop it um for this i would uh crop with the film border but as you can see the film border is fucked up so we're not gonna crop with the film border we're just gonna like you know what I'm saying it's gonna be a regular photo yeah it's real easy and then yeah yeah you got your film photo right here uh, looks very good now over here you can come over here and clearly add more adjustments the only thing with this is uh, it gets a little bit tricky when trying to edit this after the fact because once you convert it everything is now inverted So if I wanted to add some highlights to this I would have to go backwards and if I wanted to take highlights away I would have to go forward. So you just have to keep that in mind when you know Editing your film photos after converting them with negative lab pro so um, for this I'm gonna put this back at zero um, Honestly the photo looks good to me it came out the way I do very little editing to my film photos um, despite popular belief I don't do a lot so this I would be very happy with this photo and I would move on to the next one photo is a photo of Irby so this photo is um, clearly another portrait we're gonna bring this up convert negatives and then wait for it to do its thing once again See, it's the thing I love about film too is bro, like just, you don't have to do much. Like it, it already comes out looking edited. So like I said, I'll be done with that. I'm going to just make this regular photo. I'm not even gonna scan with the, I'm not even gonna put the borders on. 
on this photo. See, the reason I scan is just like in case I want to like add the borders. I've noticed that like low key adding the borders lately to my work. Like I, I loved it when I first started. Like yeah, I can add film borders. It's gonna look dope. This and that. At this point, everybody knows I shoot film. At this point, like I shoot film, I don't have to you know what I'm saying, announce it or let everybody know that I'm shooting film or like do anything extra so that people know that I'm shooting film. Also, this film has the film look that everybody talks about, so it's not that hard to distinguish what's film and what's not. But um, if I do add the border now, it's no longer the entire border. It's just like a little bit of it. adding the border now kind of takes away from the work that I'm doing and just like it's, it's a lot more to look at. Nothing against people who use the film border because I clearly did for a long time and still do sometimes. But I feel like it takes away from the work that I'm trying to show people and what I'm trying to put out. So I don't really, you know, scan with the film border anymore. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of contrast to this. Let me turn these highlights up. And the good thing about film is that this was a very, very, very bright sunny day. Shot at three, like shot wide open. I overexposed it too, and it still just held so much of that information in the highlights. So, you know, film is very good for retaining that highlight detail, and that's really why I can't get enough of it. Now, I feel like a lot of this, like a lot of the way that I learned how to, um, edit these photos is literally just like doing it like there's no other way to do any like just literally just doing it work so um that's what i did i'm going to bring these greens up so you know what i'm saying they looked a little dull so i'm gonna bring them up um bring them up actually those were like yellows but i'm gonna bring I mean, whatever you you know what i'm trying to say her skin um is like a little reddish or like purplish so Kind of bring it down just a tad, like not that much, because that is her skin color. But you know, want to make sure it looks good. You know what I'm saying? And another way you could do this is you could just export it if you don't want to go through the trouble of like what's this and like what color is that. You could just export it and then bring it back into Lightroom, and then it, everything will be normal and you can edit it like that i do that sometimes when you know what i'm saying i don't feel like fucking around with this shit and trying to figure out which sliders which color and just all this other shit it's just like a lot easier so didn't have to do too much editing didn't have to you know what i'm saying take too much away add too much to anything and i would be very happy with this photo and basically that is how i edit my film photos using negative lab Pro. That's probably going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I don't necessarily do videos like this all the time. Also, I do want to mention that we're going to slow down on this channel and kind of just um, not put out so many videos. We're doing four videos a week for months, like almost five months, probably over five months. I'm not really sure, but we're going to slow down probably less than that to two videos a week, maybe one video a week, some week. So um, yeah, just going to slow down, not because of burnout or anything, but want to focus on some other things. Also, I want to give people time to you know appreciate the videos that I put out because I feel like we put in a lot of work and effort into these videos and I do appreciate and I'm truly grateful for everybody who do watch my videos. I just want to give a little time to sit and for other people to appreciate it. I feel like once you put out a lot of stuff and it just gives people like people don't really appreciate it that much when you just constantly putting shit out. So kind of just want to slow down on that. And you know what I'm saying? Just I don't know do other shit so um yeah that is how i edit and scan my photos this video was sponsored by epidemic sound the music that you hear in every single one of my videos uh the music that you hear right now sound effects anything you would need is from epidemic sound and if you click the link in my description you will get one month free to epidemic sound so yeah go sign up anyway if you are not subscribed to the channel um it would be truly and gratefully appreciate it if you did subscribe if you are subscribed please ring the notification bell so you get notified every single time i drop a video truly and gratefully appreciate it so with all that being said let's get out here let's go do some shit i did a video on developing photos so if you haven't seen that go check that out uh you can now develop your photos at home scan your photos at home and then you know what i'm saying it's a much more intimate process and you know what i'm saying you don't have to pay anybody you just lose a little bit of time that's all but time is very important so it's up to you if you want to lose that time or not so that is how you do it um yeah anyway with all that being said let's get out here let's go do some shit.